congrats on your new puppy. <laughs> awesome. Now, one of the most important life skills your puppy needs to learn is how to properly be crate trained and learn to absolutely love their crate instead of hate it and want to avoid it. In this video, we're going to determine which crate size is best for your puppy and which crate design or model would fit your puppy's needs. Be sure to hit the like button so others can see this valuable content as well. Now, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button so you can grab next week's video lesson when it goes live. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Don't forget to check out my other social networks. You can grab the link to those in the description below. I know there are several kinds of dog crates to choose from. Everything from metal to plastic to fabric, and even some wooden or decorative crates are available on the market as well. It can be really overwhelming trying to figure out which one is best for your puppy. So today, I wanna to share my favorite crate suggestions for you and hopefully save you some money in the long run. One of the most important things to keep in mind when you're picking the right crate is the size you should get. Now, your puppy should only have just enough room to turn around and lay down in their crate. Now, they should not be able to play in one side and potty in the other. They also should not be able to pace and circle as this actually allows them to build up their anxiety while in the crate. If the crate's too big, you're going to notice that your puppy has a lot more accidents in their crate. This is because the more movement they're allowed to have in there, the more their system is gonna process and we want them to just remain calm and relaxed and resting in their crate. All right, for almost 20 years, I have been using mostly the metal crates while crate training my dogs. I found that these are easier to adjust as puppies grow because most metal crates come with a divider that can be moved as your puppy grows. However, over the last few years, I've been switching over to using primarily plastic crates. I've personally had about 25 dogs that I've called my own over the last 20 years as a trainer. And of all those dogs, the majority of them that fared far better were the ones that were in the plastic crates. Many of the dogs that came through our board and train programs also did far better in the plastic crate than they did in the metal. There's just something about the coziness and comfort that the plastic crate provides that the metal doesn't. The metal crates tend to be more open and airy unless you cover them, which is what I would recommend you do if you chose one of the metal crates. I also found that the dogs that continually had accidents in a metal crate did far better in a plastic crate when they were switched over. Now, if you decide to use a metal crate, just make sure that you not only use the divider, but you cover the crate as well. The key to covering the crate is to make sure that you have something bigger over the top such as a piece of plywood or a piece of cardboard, so that when you put the sheet over the top, the sides do not touch. If you want more tips on crate training your puppy and you're teaching them to absolutely love their crate and go running to it when you call crate time, then make sure to check out this video. Now, we put that plywood or cardboard over the top so that our puppy doesn't pull in the sheet and start chewing on it. The benefits of the metal crate are that they don't topple over if you use them for traveling. Sometimes the plastic crates do. They kind of roll over in a vehicle. Uh, typically, dogs aren't able to break through the metal crates, especially if you buy one of the better quality ones. Most metal crates have a tray that can be easily removed for cleaning purposes. However, the downfalls of the metal crate are that they're more open and more airy, unless you cover them. They do tend to rust over time, they are much heavier than the plastic crates, and they tend to be a little noisier when the dogs move around in them. And some of the metal crates are really just poor quality material. Uh, the dogs have been known to escape pretty, pretty easily from them. I find that the plastic crates are far easier to clean. They are very durable. Most of them are made of a thicker plastic that's pretty hard to break. And as I mentioned before, they're a little cozier, more den-like, which makes your puppy feel more comfortable and safe. Most plastic crates travel pretty well in a vehicle or when flying, but make sure if your puppy's traveling in a plastic crate, um, if the base is kind of smaller, again, it's easier to tip over in a vehicle, so for that reason, make sure it's secured in using a seat belt or a strap. Plastic crates don't fold well, and if you get one of the cheap ones, they don't last as long either. 
you may need to upgrade as your puppy grows and sometimes they become bulky to carry. No matter what crate you get, just make good investments so you don't buy the cheap ones just to save a buck. You'll end up spending more money in the long run when you keep replacing broken crates um, that your puppy could potentially escape from. I'm not a big fan of wooden or decorative crates, although they look really nice and gorgeous in your home. Most of them can be easily destroyed when a puppy is going through their teething and chewing phase. They're definitely harder to clean and they tend to be more expensive than the other options because they're a decorative piece for your home. The wooden crates might be a good investment if your puppy is well past the teething and chewing stage. One crate I never suggest for puppies is the soft-sided crate, at least for puppies anyway. Most of these can be easily chewed in a matter of minutes, and your puppy, if they have an accident, it makes it much harder to clean. They tend to become very stinky and smelly very quickly, and they don't last as long. Really, the only benefit is that they can easily be folded up and moved to another location quickly. Now, these are great for dogs that have proven themselves trustworthy and they don't have accidents or they're well beyond the chewing stage. We tend to see these kind of soft-sided crates at events such as agility or rally obedience competitions, not when we're working on crate training a brand new puppy. Once you've determined what kind of crate you want your puppy to stay in when you leave or for nap time during the day or even bedtime at night, you're going to want to make sure you measure your puppy so that you get just the right size crate. Before we measure for the right size crate, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you get notified when next week's video goes live. Now, you're going to want to measure your puppy from the ground to the top of their head and add about two to three inches. This should be the perfect height for your puppy's crate. Next, you're going to want to measure from the tip of their nose all the way to the base of their tail and add about two to three inches, and that's about how long your puppy's crate should be. Your puppy shouldn't be packed into their crate like a sardine in a can. However, like I said before, we don't want your puppy to have too much space that they pace and they roam in there and create behavioral problems later down the road. Now, don't forget, if you're experiencing some unwanted behaviors from your puppy, like barking, jumping, accidents in the house, pulling on the leash, don't use the crate as punishment. Instead, grab the puppy training crash course and learn what to do about those frustrating behaviors. The link can be found below this video. Okay, in the comments below, tell me which crate are you going to choose? Plastic? Metal? Wood? Soft-sided?